Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. We're going to take a look today at one of those special features that Rotary does. We are a service organization that do a lot of benefits and good within the community. Today we're going to be looking at how we do that. That is done through grants and the grant process, how these are funded. And with me today I have Bruce Howard who is our local Rotarian expert on grants. Thanks for having me. I oh, appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. Sure, thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Bruce. I'm from the Rotary Club of Cambria, been a Rotarian for almost 30 years, um, privately employed, have a wife of 20 years and a son at UCSC in his second semester, and a 29-year-old daughter with two kids married to a cop living in New Zealand. <laughs> Very good. Okay, and how about Rotary? How did you get involved with Rotary? Well, actually, through Uncle Joe. <laughs> my uncle was district governor. My dad invited me to lunch. My uncle and my dad invited me to lunch, and I came in my flip-flops and shorts, and it was his district conference. Mm. And Art Linkletter was the MC, <laughs> and I was sitting in the audience, and of course up close to the stage, because I didn't realize that I was at the honored guest table, <laughs> and Art Linkletter asked for Bruce Howard to come to the stage, and I was looking around to see who else <laughs> was the other Bruce Howard. My <laughs> and my dad gave me a Paul Harris. Wow. And this is like 30 some years ago. Paul Harris is a thousand dollar award that goes to the Rotary Foundation, which we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And um, they kind of hooked me from then on. Wow, that's great. So, um, how much of a part of that Rotary um, that you've enjoyed has come from projects, doing projects specific? Well, the one that first captured my wife and I, uh, a past district governor of our district, Anil Garg, was doing a national immunization day, polio eradication, you've done a show on polio already, was, um, is, is, is a priority of Rotary. And he invited a group of us from our district to go to um, Uttar Pradesh in northern India for polio eradication. And I asked my wife, and she said, absolutely not, I'm not going. <laughs> It was in 2003, and we went. We ended up going, spending um, a life-changing time there. I mean, we saw what the world was and and what the world needed, and came back to where we live in Cambria, California. Came back to our comfortable house in Cambria, where you could turn on water and you could drink it, and there's sanitation and electricity, and decided that uh, we needed to be more involved. So we're, I was a Rotarian. I was in the Rotary Club of Cambria for a while before I became a Rotarian, right. as we say in Rotary. Very, very true. So that's, uh, we talk about it, it's the Rotary moment then. That, that is occurred. a Rotary moment thing. And that is, that is amazing, astounding. Um, as far as the trip that you took to India, what else did you see there as far as how the foundation worked, how Rotary was part of that process? Well, it's actually everywhere there. It's everywhere here also, and we don't see it and we don't know it. But there it's really prominent because it's a developing country. So the medical clinics, the ambulances, the water projects, the water wells, the orphanages. I mean, pretty much the Rotary Foundation was, was everywhere there and very visible. Again, it's visible. It's here also, but it's not as visible. It's in our communities, as you know, mm -hmm. with the work that we do quietly within our communities. But in India uh, and in most developing countries I've been, it's way more visible. And, um, you know, that makes you proud that you can do something. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm privately employed in Cambria, California. So what could I do to impact our world? Um, Rotary gives me a uh, um, facility to do that. And my wife and I are together. She's a Rotarian also. Great. Past district president, I mean, past president of our club. Mm -hmm. And she's as involved as I am. Good. Tell us a little bit about the structure of the grants, how that works, the process on selecting a project specific and how that funding comes about when you do a grant. Well, um, I'm going to try to keep it simple. Um, <laughs> and it, and it, is, it is simple, but we use acronyms in Rotary, and I'm going to try to not use any acronyms. <laughs> okay. So please kick me under the table. <laughs> if you we'll do. Um, basically, R Rotary clubs are almost autonomous. We're connected to each other. Um, through Rotary International and to, through the Rotary Foundation. So there's two different entities in Rotary. Rotary International, which is the operational side, is how I view it, and Rotary Foundation, which is the charitable giving side. Uh, all of us, all of the different clubs contribute in their own ways. So um, to the Rotary Foundation I'm talking about right now. So when we were in India, they did a thing where um, they had a little box and they called it sunshine and they would pass the box around to their members giving sunshine. 
in Nigeria they opened a book and they would pass the book around and people would put the Naira, the local currency, in the book. That money from around the world, from all the different clubs in the world, and all the different pr fundraising projects goes to the Rotary Foundation. In a nutshell, the Rotary Foundation keeps that money, puts it in, the, in a, a holding pattern for three years. All the, the interest that's earned um, operates all of Rotary Foundation business, and then three years afterwards. So 100% of the donations to Rotary go to end projects. At the end of the three years, they give back to the Rotary districts. Our district is 70, how many clubs? 73? 70, 74 now. 74 yeah. clubs from China Lake to Thousand Oaks to Cambria, California to Paso Robles. And they, the Rotary Foundation will give back that money, half of that money, and then the district divvies it out with the oversight of, of um, the Rotary Foundation. And there's two types of grants, and basically one's big, called global grants, and one is smaller, called district grants. That's not necessarily accurate, right, right. but for our purposes here, that's good enough. That sounds good. We talk about the money or the funds coming back um, every every three years. What you're saying then is that it's a hundred percent return based on a three-year return. It is indeed. That's the, great. Again, I don't know the model that we have that the operational budget comes out of the interest only. So 100% of what you give to the Rotary Foundation ends up in a project. I don't know if anybody has that model. I think it's a great model. So we actually aren't looking at, say, contributions to the foundation. We are actually looking at investing it because it comes back directly to grants. Good point. I'm going to use that, actually. I've, I've <laughs> never used you. that before. Oh, thank I like you. It. <laughs> Good. Um, we have a few examples of some projects that you did. If you want to go through those, we could take sure. a look at those. Um, you supplied me with probably, looks like about nine, eight or nine pictures here. Let's start with the first one. That looks like a project in possibly Africa? In northern Nigeria, actually. Okay. So when we went to India, the first time we went to India on this National Immunization Day, we decided that we wanted to do more um, immunizations. I, I thought it would be uh, a worthy thing for my wife and I and our family, because we shared it with our kids, to be part of polio eradication. Only one disease has ever been eliminated in the world. That's uh, um, um, smallpox. Right. And um, so I thought this was a worthy cause. When we were in, Indi in India, there was an outbreak in northern Nigeria that spread everywhere throughout Africa. Um, so we decided that we would go to northern Nigeria. So I asked around for who was leading the next trip to northern Nigeria, and I found out there was no one. So my wife and I put together a team, as Rotary allows you to do. Before we got there, there was a lot of dissent with the, with the uh, local, it's a, it's a Muslim area, um, like 100% Muslim. North, it's Kano, Nigeria. It's a 5,000 year old trading city from the caravans coming down across the Sahara. The um, lot of dissent, including some of the political leaders and some of the religious leaders back then in 2004. This gentleman, um, they, they took us to what they call KPVTA, it's the Kano Polio Victims Trust Association. And there was a gentleman that ran it, that create, was a founder and director, Aminu Ahmed was his name. And before we got there, he assembled a parade of polio victims. And polio was prevalent in this part of the world, so there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of they call them creepers. I know that's an offensive term to us, but that's what they call them. And they had a creeper parade to try to tell people, get your kids immunized, don't let this happen again. So when we were there, we did the immunizations, but we also went to KPVTA and got to meet Aminu. Aminu, in Nigeria, polio is, comes to you because of bad juju. So if you have a child that has polio, it's because the parents did something bad. So what you do if you're a parent is you hide that child and you don't let them out. And when they get 16 or 17 years old, you kick them out. So they have no education, no skills, no social skills, no ability to, to do anything. And all of a sudden they're 16 or 17 and they're on their own. Hmm. Aminu started 
the Kano Polio Victims Trust Association in order to make those polio survivors self-sufficient. And they make um, wheelchairs that are hand cranked. They do a whole lot of things, but the primary business is wheelchairs that are hand cranked and they do taxis um, to make them f uh, to use by hand for the people that earn a living. We were completely blown away. Aminu, uh, the first rule at KPVTA is if you join KPVTA, you're automatically kicked out if they catch you begging, can't beg. Hmm. And if they catch you, you're out. Hmm. Um, we wanted to become involved with that, so getting back to your question, long-winded way back to your <laughs> question, sorry. No problem. The, um, the first grant we did was for, um, I think, deaths, because the parents that were members of KP, KPVTA, the polio survivors, have kids that don't have polio. And they're going to school, and it was a special school, and they had no deaths and no school supplies and no uniforms. They wear uniforms. It was an English colony, so they do the traditional English uniforms. So we paid for deaths. We bought um, school supplies and did what we called scholarships, but it was actually the uniforms and the school supplies. Um, we went to a girls' college. These are all separate grants there. We went to a girls' college in Kano, and the girls had no restrooms, no sanitation. So they would just go in the bushes. Um, they had restrooms, but they were holes in the ground, and they were in complete disarray. And they had an interact club, which, as you know, is, is a high school, high school. rotary, um, basically. Um, our local high school in Cambria, California, has a very strong interact club. And we connected them, and they worked together to build new sanitation facilities for the girls' college in Kano, Nigeria. Wow. Now, we're currently into larger grants there. And the larger grants are vocational training for the members of KPVTA. Uh, one is for welding. We bought a bunch of uh, torches and, and equipment and training for them in how to make the bikes and how to outfit the cars. And we also, for the females, we did, um, and sorry about the sexist reality, but that's just how it goes, yeah. um, for dyeing fabric and for using, making patterns and creating clothing. The other project we did after those two a vocational training project was to teach them a little bit of English and how money worked because most of these people didn't know how to money so they can't do commerce without knowing how to give change so we did a class on how to train people a little bit of English in case people were English speaking and how to do commerce that's that's one example long-winded but one example <laughs> that is great one thing uh, I think is pretty fascinating and people probably want to know about this when did you go to uh, Nigeria for the NID? First one was, I believe, 2005. Okay. Um, we went 2005. We led a team 2005, 2006, 2007. And then um, my cousin Brad was doing another one. He's a travel agent, so mm -hmm. he knows. Actually, I've never done anything like that. Mm -hmm. So when he said, I'll do that for you, I said, great, you go. Yeah. Perfect. Because nobody makes any money. It's, this is not sure. a... This is not a commercial venture. Right. Um, in fact, you have to pay your own way. Right. Um, Brad took over, but the last year that we were going was um, when the um, volcano happened in Iceland, oh. and we had to cancel that trip. We had we were all, I mean, it was literally we were loading up the car to go, and since then there has been problems with Boko Haram, and they have told us it's not safe. In Sao Paulo, just now meeting Jonathan Mujabi, who's the past Rotary International president. He was the first time he said, it's now safe, please come back. Okay. Good. So we'll see if we, if we good, get back there. Good. Um, and then currently, and well, actually now, Nigeria is considered polio free as far as it was no the most, cases. Where, when we first went, because of this outbreak, it was the most in polio endemic part of the planet. India was making progress at the time, um, but, but Nigeria had fallen back, they had a setback, and it was the most polio and And lots of people told us not to go, including Otto Estelle. Past District Governor Otto told us not to go. But he had only been in the south. And I had been to the north because I was a flight attendant. <laughs> okay. And we used to take hajis, we used to take pilgrim, Muslim pilgrims from northern Nigeria into Saudi Arabia for the hajj. So I had been there a lot and I knew it was safe. So that's why I headed up the team to go there. Wow. And now um, 
polio, there's been no polio in Nigeria for over a year, no polio in India for over three years now or right. four years? Um, four years now. Four years. Yeah. And, and still endemic in only two countries. Right. And uh, as you have briefed everyone, I'm sure, um, last, when we started the project in the late 80s, there were a thousand new cases of polio a day. Started with a, with a grant, by the way, right. that project. Right. And, um, and last year in 2015, there were 74 cases wow. in the world. Yeah. So we're this close. And that is a great, good success story once we and get there, but we're almost by there. A grant, and it started with what we're talking about a rotary grant. A rotary grant. A rotary grant. Very good. Some other pictures you brought with us. Um, looks like this is the project in India, right? It's with uh, the Piali School? Yes, um, with Deepa. Um, a woman after all of our hearts. Correct. The uh, very interesting woman, um, she lives in San Inez. She's a past district governor, like, like Wade is, um, which means they were, were basically the administrative head and inspirational head for our district for the 74 clubs that Wade was talking about. Um, she was from Bengal, outside of Calcutta, in eastern India. And the, um, it's just an interesting story. Her high school principal, was Sister Teresa before she became Mother Teresa, <laughs> which is kind of a cool wow. kind of thing. But um, she was educated and did great in life and had some successful um, vocations and ended up um, going back. She had always said she was going to go back and help the girls. In this part of the world, um, girls are actually throwaway. Yeah. Um, we say they get sold into the sex trade at an early age, but in reality, it's not, what really happens is th because that makes it sound like the parents don't care about their kids and that's not accurate. The parents care deeply about their kids so they will try to get them to a place where they could be fed and be protected. If it happens to be a 13 year old girl and it's a 50 year old man, so be it, at least they'll be safe. So um, she created Pace International, or Pace Universal, sorry. Um, and the first school that she's doing, it was a girls' school in Piali. And it's focusing on girls now only because the girls need the most help. Boys, because the boys are the social security for the parents, boys are kind of covered. The parents will do all they can to make sure the boys get the education and get the tools they need because that's how the parents will leave, live when they're older and can't get their own vacation. So she created this school, she did a 3-H, First she created the school and then she was finding that the girls would come from the village and it was not a residential school at the time. Girls would come from the village and they would have good education and um, good um, protein, they would eat and good hygiene and then they'd go home and they had dirty water and they were abused by their dad or their brother. She was seeing that it was a village problem and not just specific to the girls. So. She did a large grant, which uh, we called 3-H grant, and um, she built wells throughout the village. They ended up capitalizing outside of the grant process a structure for, for, the, um, for PACE, for the uh, Piali School. She asked a bunch of different clubs to participate. Our particular club in the photos that you may be seeing mm -hmm. are from the sanitation um, facility that we built, that our club okay. participated in building and uh, we've been there. When we went uh, a couple years ago with our son, it was the first time he had been there, and Deepa was with us. And we're staying in Calcutta, and it's about an hour and a half drive outside of Calcutta to go to this village. And, uh, and it, if you haven't ever been to India, it, it's, um, if you go there, you will understand what we Rotarians do, because <laughs> it's pretty amazing. But Deepa said, make sure Tommy sits in the front seat. And I, did, I was not putting it together why, and then we started going through the little streets. And I was, good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's true, very true. <laughs> good, very good. That covers the, uh, the, the Pace School. I think it's outstanding internationally. Let's bring it back to uh, community, within, within our communities here in uh, our district in I, California. I think, I mean, one of the cool things that I've heard that I didn't know, I was told this from, from other district leadership, and I don't remember who told me this, but La Conchita, the slides in yes. 2005, the rescue dogs were trained, were acquired and trained in, a, in a, a grant project that was sponsored by South Korea. Hmm. So, like I said, sometimes in our country we're not as visible as we are in developing countries. Um, 
to those people that were being rescued by those dogs, I think we were very visible that day. <laughs> That's very true. We also had a program in the past on WE, Women's Economic Ventures, and our partnership with them, um, basically a million dollar grant for microcredit, helping develop uh, communities here in our district. Is that, that's what Heather put together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. So that's another There's just so many of, of these things. I mean, I wrote some down, um, not just us, but uh, several communities in our district. We did portable defib units. Mm -hmm. So in, well, I live in Cambria, California. We bought four. There were no portable defib units in Cambria, California. So if you had a heart attack, the paramedics would get to you, and the facility was on the was on the um, van, but but not. So um, score, and we do easy stuff like scoreboards at the local high school. Right, right. Um, I know our school. I mean, our club does a dictionary project where we give dictionaries to all of the third graders in Carpentry and uh, Summerland. It, it's, those are it's up to Rotary is the most gra grassroots organization that I've ever been involved with. So it's up to the inspiration of the local Rotarian. Really, the local Rotarian. I mean, we we do a thing at our club, and several clubs participate that are the honor flights which are honoring mostly at this time WW2 and Korean War vets by taking them back to DC to the memorials, introducing them, get, giving thanks, you know, the local congressmen will thank them for their, they, it, it's a world, to see these men, I've known my whole, uh, I've been in Cambria for 30 years, and these guys I know in the community, 85 year old, 90 year old guys, standing in front of our club, weeping with gratitude for finally being thanked for their service in the Second World War uh -huh. or in Korea, it just, it, it's pretty amazing. It is, very amazing. I would uh, like to jump into the last picture. I've got a picture here with you uh, at one of your club meetings. On that one, um, I was privileged to be the governor that year and you guys had your, I believe, 40th anniversary of your club. I put this picture up there specific because the entertainment and the story that you told all focused around a fundraiser for a project. Do you remember that? I have no recollection <laughs> of what you're talking about. That's great. But I want to let great. people know if that goes on on um, <laughs> on television. In real life, I'm thinner than that, and I have more hair than that. I just want to make that really clear. I <laughs> got so. it. Let me see. What was that? I think it was either an ice cream sale or something like that. You were selling something. Smoothies? That, was it? It may have been the smoothie story. We, yeah. did, we have we have a we. Every Rotary Club, Rotary is the most grassroots organization I've ever heard of. So if you have an idea in Rotary, as an example, we have, there was a, the polio eradication started with, as I understand it, a pharmacist that had some extra vaccine and a friend of his that knew a guy that had an air freight company. And they took it to the Philippines in, in the late 70s. Um, there was a guy that, as I understand it, had a hardware store and wanted to do something for, um, um, disasters. Got together some plastic bins, put together, put a tent in it, put water purification in it, put a cook stove in it, a bunch of different things. Um, we now call that shelter box and 100,000 people a day <laughs> sleep under shelter boxes. Wow. So it's very, very grassroots. Every club comes up with its own projects. Every club comes up with its own methodology of mm -hmm. earning money, including the famous Cambria smoothie booth. <laughs> so that right. might be what you were talking That's about. That's what it was. I do remember the story now. I put up uh, two more pictures. This picture, these pictures actually came from uh, Virginia when I served as the president's rep. And that picture shows a fundraiser that actually raised $42,000 wow. for polio, for the polio eradication wow. process. Now they're close to a Bristol Motor Speedway. That's one of the uh, icon areas of their district. And so what they did was they actually created these cardboard cars and they had races. Now the way the car moved or went around the quote track was that you had to fundraise to move your car oh, forward. Oh yeah, oh, that's it, good. It, it, was, it was a pretty good one. It was pretty wild they actually. Teams. They, have teams. they had teams. Uh, it was sponsored by clubs, I believe. Yeah. So each club or had each- a car. Had a, had bought a car. You had to buy the car. Uh, you get the cardboard cutout. You could design it any way you want. Some of the badging that you see on the car itself were sponsors for the cars, as much as four like or five NASDAQ. thousand dollars. It's like Nasdaq. Ex exactly. That's that's <laughs> exactly it. Now that was probably one of the most unique thought out fundraisers I've seen. And again, forty two thousand dollars in about an hour's time. Yeah, it's some, our club <laughs> does, and that might be what you were talking about. We do a thing called Viva, 
which is um, <laughs> it, it started right. as phony gaming, um, you know, with roulette tables and stuff, and uh, and a silent auction. And we do, I mean, our little Cambria club does like forty thousand dollars a year. It's amazing. Wow. wow, that is. Now, what does most of that money go towards? A hundred percent goes. To, n not most, all of it goes to projects. Good advice. Community projects. Good. Youth projects, international projects, it's 100% goes to that. The operational part of our club is funded by our dues right. and, right. and the members purposely paying operational expenses. The right. funding is for, um, for charitable giving is a whole other arm. Good, good. Um, give me a couple of examples of uh, some of the community projects you've been involved with, have done with that money or anything else with the club. Well. Um, again, you don't see them. This this one that I gave you, the photos of, is one that's it's kind of dear to my heart. It's it's a beautification project basically. In Cambria, downtown Cambria, there's we have a veterans memorial building, and a couple of uh, Vietnam vets got this idea to do a Rotary Peace Garden. And to me, the concept of doing a Rotary Peace Garden in a veterans memorial building is just absolutely perfect because I've never met. I have a lot of friends that are vets, and I've never met one of them that thinks that war is a good thing. Yeah. They're the most peaceful people I know because they've seen war. And we raised the money to, we, it was a joint project between the Community Services District, between the American Legion, between the county, and between Rotary. One of the things we do in Rotary is try to partner. And most of the time we're able to grab different people in different and, and oftentimes they're Rotarians right. that are on the city council or whatever <laughs> it happens to be. Mm -hmm. And we did the uh, beautification project. That's the Rotary Peace Garden at the Veterans Good. Memorial. I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Rotary actually has a pretty large impact within communities if, if done time. right. Big time. But often they don't know it. Yeah. That's and, and that's that one of the things we have to work on. We have to work on telling people what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is one of the hard parts. <laughs> it seems to be, and hopefully through the TV show like this one here, we Thank can get you. some Thank of the word out, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, Bruce, your title this year is a District uh, Grants Chair. Yes. So with that, um, I'm going to thank you in advance for all the work that you do at that part, making it possible to have all these available to us. And with that, I would like to thank you, uh, thank everybody again for watching. I want to share with you some of the efforts that we as Rotarians do, again, as Bruce says, behind the scene. Take a look and see, when you see that Rotary logo, see what's going on, see what they're doing, and if you have an opportunity, visit one of the clubs and see how they plan, because it's on a weekly basis that we put these together. And with that, thank you very much, and we will see you the next time. Thank you.